Aloha. Today, I would like to invite you to experience a little Maui magic. I'm sitting here just up the beach from the Royal Lahaina Resort. The first place I came to Maui and fell in love with her almost 50 years ago now. Maui, my first time with mom. In the winter of 1973, my mother called and invited me to join her and her best friend, Barbara, on a Hawaiian vacation. Without hesitation, I declined. Justin and I had been married for only four months and I didn't want to even entertain the idea of leaving him to go on a vacation much less to a romantic destination like Hawaii. A couple of weeks later, I casually mentioned my mother's invitation to him. His response was also immediate. Go, go to the islands. I never want to go there because the beaches are way too crowded and I don't like crowds. This is your chance, go. So I packed my bikini and a couple of pairs of shorts and joined Barbara, my mom, and a random group of other tourists on an organized vacation tour that included Maui and Kauai. We arrived, received plumeria lays, and boarded the bus headed to the Royal Lahaina Resort. The hotel had just added its distinctive high-rise building to its traditional garden bungalows. We happily talked the front desk into giving us an inferior bungalow accommodation nestled among the orchids, hibiscus, and ginger. To say I was surprised and delighted by all the sights, sounds, and experiences of the Hawaiian Islands would be an understatement. The moment I began to descend onto the tarmac, I was enveloped in fragrant, warm, moist air. To this day, the warm smell of plumeria carried on the breeze is my welcome back home when I return. The Royal Lahaina had an open air dining room with birds flying freely in and out. Those birds and their cousins woke me up just before dawn every morning with a loud cacophony of twitters, squawks, and calls. One afternoon, I rented a mask and snorkel and had the time of my life floating on the surface, looking down. I was fascinated by the wave patterns in the sand and the occasional school of translucent fish, which blended in amazingly well with water and ocean floor. I was totally unaware that just 300 yards up the beach, there was a verdant reef home to rainbow array of butterfly fish, Moorish idols, and the Hawaiian state fish Humuhumu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. I got the worst sunburn of my life that day on my back and the backs of my legs, lulled into complacency by the cool water and losing all sense of time. My mother and Barbara had been to Maui before and knew the ropes. They knew all the restaurants that would send a car to come and get us. One memorable evening, we ate at Pineapple Hill, an old plantation owner's home. It was a large Hawaiian style house with lush gardens and gregarious parrots that greeted diners at the front door. That evening, I had turtle soup garnished with fino sherry. It was delicious and so memorable that I can still taste it in my imagination. Turtle soup, of course, has been banned from menus everywhere for some years now, but I'm happy that I had it once upon a time when sea turtles were plentiful and I could enjoy it in naive bliss. My most memorable experience on Maui was aboard a sunset sailing trip. The afternoon was perfect, the Mai Tais and Poo Poo's abundant and delicious, and the trade winds brisk. I spent just about the entire time on the trampoline suspended between the twin halls of our catamaran, dressed in my bathing suit. The ocean spray came up through the webbing, it was fun and refreshing. 
As we cruise along, I took plenty of photographs of the coastline. In 73, there were only two hotels on Ka'anapali Beach, the Sheraton and the Royal Lahaina. Everywhere else, sugarcane fields descended to the sand. I wanted Justin to see the farmland and the uncrowded beaches. When I returned home, I shared all these sights, sounds, and experiences with him. I told him that the resorts were filled with old people celebrating their 25th anniversaries huddled in the shade of palm trees around the pool. No one was in the ocean. I considered this a waste because with all the water sports and the great weather, Hawaii was ideal for young people. We should not wait until we're too old and decrepit to enjoy it, I said. I showed Justin my photographs of the Ka'anapali shoreline and exclaimed, see, it's all agriculture. You would love it. Magus Maui. I am the ocean, waves cracking like pistol shot, erupting through blowholes, womb of life, caressing the shoreline. I am the trade winds, whipping water into frothy peaks, the devastating hurricane, the tropical breeze, whispering ancient island wisdom. I am the morning minas, the cooing doves, gentle laughter, talking story, slack key riffs, the intricate whale song. I am the warm island sun, rainbows playing on coral reefs, kissing flowers, radiating mana, relentless burning, beating down, soft dawn and evening glow. I am the regal orchid, the red banana blossoms, fragrant plumeria, and the exquisite tuberose reminding you of heaven's scent. I am pineapple rain, sudden downpours, flash floods, water falling through lava fingers, filling black lava hands. I am mystic haleakala, the poly in the rain, sacred black rock, Pele's molten tresses turned to stone. I am the rising Malka moon, smiling above the West Maui mountains, hanging in the midnight sky, waves shimmering, silver and gold, melting into the horizon. I am Magus Maui. Wherever I walk, the sun, moon, ocean, and fragrant wind, the lava, laughter, and rain pour forth from my aloha heart. So I invite you to experience Maui, to take a virtual vacation. So turn on your favorite ocean soundtrack. Breathe in the scent of flowers, real or imagined. Turn on some slacky guitar music. Remember that the ocean is the womb of life and that you still have the sea, the salty sea within you. I invite you to visit Maui in your imagination. I invite friends who are healing from one thing or another to come here as I invite you today to come to Maui in your imagination. Aloha Nui Loa, which means the sweetest of alohas. This is Bonnie Meyer, Divine Conversations. See you next time.